that's all good. So yeah, yeah. thanks thanks so much for joining me. Um, if you could just introduce yourself, you know, um, what's your name, where you're from, and just provide a bit about your background. Okay, yeah, so my name is Michael Guilford. Um, I'm from Sheffield. And my background uh, the last um, 10 years has been cycling coaching. So I coach um, a number of different cycling disciplines, road, mountain bike, cross country, mountain bike, downhill and enduro, and uh, cyclocross. So those are the main disciplines I coach. Um, and some of that is on a skills basis and some of that is more fitness focused. Um, so over the last number of years I've been coaching um, clients on a one-to-one -one basis helping with training which is generally on distance basis so over the internet using training peaks um, which is an online platform um, does that answer your question yeah yeah awesome um, so you said you've been doing that for 10 years how did you sort of make the transition into into coaching um, so well I just decided that's what I wanted to do yeah uh, my my previous job was as an engineer so i moved career change and uh it's just a matter of doing qualifications and um getting experience in it um sort of alongside my own bike racing as well so nice. um all those disciplines i've raced myself um did quite a lot of road racing and done quite a lot of mountain bike racing both the endurance side of things as well as um downhill and enduro which is the technical disciplines nice and sort of what what kind of level have you cycled at what's and what's your kind of biggest achievement okay so um hmm. well i guess going back to before i sort of raced probably my biggest achievement was um with some friends from university i cycled uh from sheffield to brighton in a day which is 240 miles wow <laughs> that's Stopped crazy three in the morning and um, getting to um, Northampton by eight o'clock in the morning, which is 100 miles point, so um, 20 miles an hour for 100 miles at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> wow, uh, that's crazy. And then I guess in terms of racing achievements, uh, you know, I've got a few, um, I've got a podium in every discipline so far. <laughs> so uh, either a win or a, a top, top three, and then probably the best achievement is probably top 10 twice in the Southeast Regional Ch Road Race Championships. Um, I think that's probably, uh, I'd say that's probably my top achievement. Really. Nice, nice. And is it um, sort of, a, is, is common for you to go on long bike rides? Not anymore, no. <laughs> not, not as much <laughs> anymore. So I, I did road racing from uh, 2014-ish to 2019 and then I've had a break from that and I've just focused on downhill and enduro at the moment which is not really any distance but I do I do still do some endurance training um like some you know three three hour rides and things but not not that much nice. what's um what's your kind of like key motivation to to get on the bike what's um what kind of drives you um fitness I always want to stay fit fit um nowadays I spend a bit more time doing strength training in the gym just for the for the mountain biking um i think uh, it's always like a bit of headspace like i live in an area where i can get out into the countryside so that's always out into the woods and things that's, that's important and i think nice. big excitement as well you know uh, particularly in the sort of riding i do at the moment um but when i was racing on the road again i i, I mainly trained so that i could go and race and that was the fun bit, really. Um, that so I think the adrenaline, and the excitement side of things. Lovely stuff. Yeah, just on the sort of main topic of the blog. So mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting to know how you know someone that's probably never cycled a, a long distance mm -hmm. um, could sort of in a in a few months be able to get start start from scratch um, and then be able to do a 50 to 100 mile bike ride and um, it'd be interesting to know kind of how you think that sort of process starts um i think um generally most of the riders i i coach who've got into that they they have they've done they've got some sort of fitness background or they've 
um, done some cycling for, which is why they sort of wanted to do it. But if you are literally starting from scratch, then the key thing is just to ride your bike regularly. Um, so that could be, you know, um, the equivalent of an hour a day, or if, if you squash that into a weekend or something, you know, um, a couple of hours on two days of the weekend, and then a few rides during the week. So I think you have to, cycling's not one of those things you can um, necessarily transfer fitness from other things. So you need to, apart from things like rowing, actually you transfer quite well, actually, and um, and a few sports do. And generally, you need to be riding the bike um, just because you've got to get used to things like sitting on the saddle and um, the position and things like that it takes a bit of time to get used to. Um, and then, you know, the fitness element, um, you, you'll build up just from doing several hours a week. Um, that's sort of quite an important thing. Um, once you've got to that point, that more comes into sort of what this training schedule should look like. Nice. And, and motion. Cool. when it comes to, you know, you say you're cycling pretty much every day, mm. would you um, kind of ha- have that differ between sort of the shorter bike rides in the week and then longer ones? what's kind of the the way to do it so you're just um just a week training okay so let's um <laughs> maybe a bit more specific with that question because that's quite an important one so i'd say what should your weekly training schedule look like and i think yeah. that comes down to your time you've got available so um generally the riders that i coach you know it's good if they have more than six hours available to train if they are looking at those sort of distance goals mm-hmm. uh, really for a you know 100 miles if you're if you're very new to cycling you might need a little bit more time than that to actually get used to it or a bit more time in terms of how many months it's going to take to prepare for that um then in terms of what the training schedule should look like as with any endurance training most of your training should be at a relatively low intensity but there are things that i would want to see in every training schedule and that is an element of muscular training or um what would call short-term endurance that sort of bursts of effort and i think repeated bursts of effort um anything up to about 30 seconds but it could be as short as 10 seconds and repeated um so we call that anaerobic or short-term endurance or an element of muscular um fitness in that um there's got to be some endurance training working on aerobic fitness so that's generally working at a point where you're breathing a little bit harder um don't go into too much specifics about what that is um there needs to be i would say for everyone particularly for older people um there needs to be an element of strength training i would say um that's generally needs to be done off the bike uh you know that could be body weight strength training or with weights or resistance machines in a gym. Um, and then the other element is just what I'd call sort of active recovery or very low intensity training. And that's, for example, what you do at the weekend. And that's important for new riders particularly to get used to things like pedaling for a long time and the position and sitting in the saddle, as well as actually getting the sort of technique as well, as well as the fact that sort of training does still improve uh, your, your endurance ability. So there's sort of four elements to that, um, really. Awesome. And um, yeah, you mentioned that sort of the exercises in the gym um, can help. Is there anything in particular that cyclists should be doing? Is it is it like a full body workout or? Uh, yeah, so full body workout. Um, so the sort of things that you're going to struggle with with cycling is because the position is always um bent over so that sort of sitting position you sit at the desk you struggle with the same problems that anyone who sits at a desk for a long time will do which is that uh your your um your hip mobility and strength is a bit limited um so doing things that open open that up so we into a long position um but also just making sure you're working the shoulders and uh working shoulders your back and your arms as well because that's all just important for all-round fitness so it would be like a fitness plan that your typical personal trainer would give someone which just works all of your body um but particularly focusing on open the hip up really okay great and i'm sure nutrition is really important um in the lead up to a race if i've got um a race say the the next uh, sorry a long ride the next day mm-hmm what's sort of the ideal food you should be eating? Um, I, I wouldn't actually put an awful lot of focus on that because um, 
uh, really people get um, a bit misled when it comes to nutrition with endurance sports. And okay. um, if you're just doing a ride, you should essentially leading up to a ride, you should eat the same thing as what you would normally eat, which is mm-hmm. um, uh, which is uh, maybe for a slightly longer ride, let's say a hundred miles ride, you should have a, a little bit more food. Um, in the few days leading up to it just to make sure that um you sort of not going to put too much stress in a digestive system around the actual event so you're actually a little bit um but rest is also really important so if you're going to do a long ride you need to rest a few days going up to it so that you're actually uh you know you've got a bit more energy um but in terms of food i think the most important thing is just to focus and focus on terms of nutrition is just a balanced diet and that's the same things that um you know um you'll see in health guidelines for the UK, uh, which is, um, you know, avoiding um, processed food, um, yeah. plenty of fruit and vegetables, and having the right balance of um, protein, carbohydrate, and fat. So making sure you're, you're just falling with the, the normal guidelines within that, and just really plenty of fruit and vegetables. And that's, that's the most important thing. Um, you don't need to get, at this point, you don't need to get too complicated. Yeah, 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 yeah that's great. The same, the same thing applies to what you should eat on a ride um, is that I would, in terms of uh, those rides, unless you're getting to the point where you're actually doing proper bike racing, where you haven't got the opportunity to stop and take time to eat something or to slow down and take time to eat something, really I would avoid too much sugary drinks or gels and things like that. Okay. Just have normal snacks like bananas, um, you know, flapjacks, those sort of things. Yeah. Yeah, not nothing too heavy, but something you can snack on during the ride. You don't need to have special energy products. They can be useful just for convenience or if you're getting to the end of a ride, you're running out of energy. You know, a caffeine gel or something can give you a bit of a boost or a bit of sugar. You yeah. know, I'd really avoid too much of those sugary products because they just have the same problems as eating too much sugar in your diet. You really want to have a healthy diet all the time. So, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. And... Um... Before you get on the bike to go on the the long bike ride, is there any sort of warm up exercises you should be doing, or are you not, just to not, get going? Not for a not for a ride. If it's a race, yes. Um, uh, if you're going to be going in at a very high intensity, yeah, you need to warm up. But in terms of that, just um, that sort of comes on to how you should approach your ride, which is just to start slow, really, um, because you know when it, if you're doing an event and there's other people there. Um, it can be a little bit of excitement around that. Yeah, yeah, just sure. Sort of yourself, particularly if it's a long, like hundred mile ride or something, you've got to sort of think about what pace you can maintain for that ride. So just go into it steady, and um, gradually build up over the sort of first hour or so. Yeah, I mean, I wish I'd known that when I did my marathon last year. I got really caught up in <laughs> the excitement of it all, going through sort of streets of Manchester, you know, really busy, loads of people cheer, sort of cheering you on as well. And I just got, <laughs> yeah, I just completely forgot about my race plan. <laughs> and I uh, just think I did the first half in sort of like an hour 40, which is one of my fastest half marathons. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you can see what my <laughs> splits were like towards the end of the race. It was quite disgraceful. But yeah, no, that's really um, good to know just to sort of yeah, start slow and then you get warmed up and then you can sort of steadily go into into the ride. I think in terms of that other things, just the next question about strategy, I think the next, the other things are um, just, um, again, most people, if it's a hilly ride, most people tend to push too hard on hills and don't push hard enough either downhill or on the flat. Right. So try and maintain really the, the same pace. Um you could use a heart rate monitor for that, but um, you can also just base it on how hard you're breathing. You don't want to be breathing really hard too much in a long ride. If that's if that long ride's a challenge for you, um, just to cover the distance, you just want to sort of go as close as you can to a steady pace over the ride. Um, and yeah, you know, go with your own pace. I think again, there might be other riders around, so um, try and pace on what you can sustain. Okay, and you know you're you're getting towards you know the end of the ride. You've you've done 250 miles or whatever it is from <laughs> Sheffield. Um, that where did you where did you go? Was it down to Brighton? You That's said yeah. yeah. So you're getting towards the end. Your body's screaming. No, you've hit the wall. How do you sort of overcome that sort of voice in your head? <laughs> um, I think is there, a, is there a method that you use or can recommend? Yeah, I think we're counting the miles 
by that point. Um, yeah. <laughs> going, I think in terms of sort of, yeah, a more sensible ride, let's say, you know, a hundred mile ride, I think um, you want to have an idea of those target points on the ride. And if it's a planned ride, then normally you're going to put in some nice scenery and things. So you yeah. could think about what the viewpoints are on the ride and sort of set those as targets to ride. Don't just, don't just count down the miles because that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Try and break the ride down so you could break the ride down into 20 mile blocks and that's five five blocks or you could have little viewpoints on the way or where there's stops or there's feed stations on the ride you could um you could aim for those and sort of count your way through that um i think other riders is quite helpful so if you've got someone at a similar pace to you that's a friend or someone else on the ride you can ride with uh, you, it's not going to push you harder than you you can yeah. then that's also really motivating yeah that's uh, a good point and um, yeah, just having some planned stops as well for food. So maybe like going, okay, I'm going to have a uh, something to eat at um, every fifth of the ride. So that's 10 or 20 miles. So having cool. also helps with nutrition as well. So making sure you're eating during that ride. 100%. And you know, you've just you just achieved your long bike ride. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely buzzing, but you're knackered. Um, mm-hmm. What's the what's the best way to kind of recover? I'm guessing you don't just get off the bike and sit down straight away. Um, I guess uh, it depends on how hard you're pushing, how intense it is towards the end of the ride, but you can just warm down towards the end of the ride. It could be the last five or 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Finish. But if if you are pushing hard all the way through the ride, then, you know, just have five or 10 minutes just pedaling around very slowly. Don't just sit down. Um, and I guess the other thing is, is just the next day in terms of recovery, you just want to get up and just uh, warm yourself up a bit and just get active again. You know that could just be uh some, you know star jumps that's sort a of warm-up or it could be just riding for for 30 minutes just so you don't feel um too sore there shouldn't be any particular need to like um to eat more or anything just your, again your normal diet it should suffice to recover and uh, maybe a little bit more protein and just make sure you eat after the so you want to have your your sort of some food straight away really yeah just, yeah um make sure you're having and and water as well so um you, you're recovering in terms of nutrition as well as well as that is it just like sort of your typical up post workout kind of stretching as well that you'd recommend yeah stretching as well and just staying warm as well like if you, yeah. you might be finishing in the cold so d- don't hang around the cold too long get warm again um you know if you're wet get changed straight away don't hang around in your cycling kit or whatever that is um you know get warm stretch have some food have a hot drink those sort of things that's all that's all important just um yeah uh, it's easy to just sort of stand around after yeah of course well brilliant thanks very much on just on that topic um just to run just a bit more about your kind of your coaching business yeah so do you kind of run your own business how does it work for you yeah so my coaching business is me like i'm self-employed so nice. i don't and, and don't employ anyone else. I do work for other people, do bits of work for British Cycling and other coaches and mm-hmm. um, other organisations. Um, but um, essentially it's me. So when it comes to the training side of things, it, it would be me that is is coaching you. Um, most of the training side of things is done on a distance basis, but I do, if clients are local, I do try and actually meet them because it's quite important to see me, for me to meet them and you know have a chat and see them ride ideally. Um, but generally, it's done on um, I deliver on a di- distance basis through um, training peaks, uh, online training plans. Cool. And sort of what? Um, how do you usually sort of get clients? Is it sort of word of mouth or? Yeah, so word of mouth. Most of my uh, uh, clients have been through clubs, so the clubs that I've been in or racing with, and those sort of contacts um, could be, uh, you know, um, through through. Um, uh coach directories on british cycling or some of the other ones i'm on or you know my my um social media as well and my website nice and so what kind of clients do you usually work with Is um, there a particular demographic or uh no anyone really generally i don't train clients who are younger than 16 um but and other than that it's just anyone so i've coached people who literally just want to get fit some people have like specific goals they're working towards um everything up to people who um you know i've coached juniors who are winning 
national junior races. So everything up to that riders or you know adults doing the same, they who racing national um national champs and things like that. So um yeah, anyone really. Nice. And just as a last question, um do you have like a particular kind of like coaching philosophy? Um yeah, so that's quite an important one. I think like like um basically it's not one size fits all. So when someone asks for a training plan, it's not like a fixed thing. My my goal is really to work with the client to help them meet training goals. Um, uh, it really comes down to what the client wants to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not going to tell them to lose weight or to to enter this race or um, to reach this certain fitness goal. It really isn't up to when they want to get out of it. And then that comes down to like working with each individual's motivation. So while I might have a, uh, well, I hope to have some input to sort of drive a client forward and, and help them to push a bit harder, it, I need to really sort of tap into what it is that gets them out training. Um, the other thing I think is just health and fitness. It, you know, it's even if someone's really like, passionate about cycling i want to keep them healthy and fit so i don't want them overtraining, and i don't want them just riding the bike if they're doing a lot of hours on the bike they need to do some strength training to um maintain good bone health and muscular strength um and the, i think the other thing is just in terms of meeting goals if a client has got specific goals it's got to be progressive so you know in terms of a 100 mile ride i don't want someone coming to me two months before the ride and saying I want to, I've never ridden a bike before on the train for this 100 mile ride. I'll probably sell and say that's not possible. You know, okay. a good idea. You know, I want them to, um, if that's if they're new to it, um, I want them, I, w- I need to be progressive with clients. So I need to have time to work with them and we need okay. to work through progressive goals, progressive goals to get to that overall outcome. So giving them, you know, things to work through. So we're not, we're not pushing people too hard and they can actually feel like, um, it's productive because the worst thing is there's no training and you don't feel like you're progressing. So, fantastic answer. Summarizes it. Lovely stuff. Well, yeah, that's um, that's it for the interview. Thank you so cool. much. Yeah. Provided some really good sort of insight and a lot of value there.